tonight we're going in the golden thread um, for the exhibition, first exhibition of the evening. But I met uh, Brendan Clark here, of, um, working on Draw Down the Walls, and Brendan has been the artist who has done the uh, piece of art at Clark Street, which is um, on the CCNI website. Well, um, one, of, one of the artists, there have been a few artists actually involved in it, the In Charge work, and Ruth, and, and I think we've all had a hand in it. But, okay. And um, can, you, can I ask you specifically, um, I know you, you were going to put it up and it was a very windy day. Yeah, we had planned for it on the, what we did was we created the option of uh, looking through one of the most contested interfaces in North Belfast. Um, it hasn't been, I think it's almost 28 years, almost 30 years that uh, you can't actually see through that interface. And we had planned to do it on Monday of last week. But the nature of it, when we were trying to keep the disclosure tight around it, you know, we didn't want to be, we wanted people to come and see the event. We were telling them it'll be the first time in 30 years you can see through an interface. And we didn't want to then spoil the magic by telling them, we can't let it happen today because it's a billboard. Yeah. Um, so keeping the magic alive was part of the secret of it. And we were able to realise it on Friday. So we had gone in behind the interface and taken high resolution photographs both sides and put it up as a challenge to create that debate around you know, what actually is being done about creating the confidence of communities to actually talk about what would it look like if these things, you know, so with the slogan we actually have developed for Draw Down what possibly our mission statement has been creating the, city, creating the conditions to imagine a city with those barriers. So we kind of kept it a bit of gay and we threw it up as part of Community Relations Week and it's worked, it's, it's really worked, it's created an awful lot of dialogue where I went for a beer last night and a guy who wouldn't even put me in a context of being an artist because he knows me from the community sector yeah. was starting to talk to me about this artwork yeah. that was on Flag Street and he actually used the word installation and I went, well, I heard something about that and uh, at the same time I wasn't actually telling him you know, that I was the person involved in it yeah. and he went, he's just like, I read it in the newsletter and I go, first of all, this is a, a nationalist and a Republican from Ardoin reading the newsletter yeah. and they had did the coverage piece on what we were intending to do. Um, and he says, we did it. And he says, it's absolutely amazing. He says, I think it's just one of the most interesting things. He says, I live the other side of that. He says, and I'm sitting on the bus, stuck in traffic, because the bomb skirt was on Friday. Yeah. I mean, there were bomb skirts everywhere. So traffic was at a standstill. And it was a snail's pace going past it. He says, I'm sitting looking at it going, I only live there. Yeah. And I can actually walk to where I live and I'm going to be stuck in this that's, bus. That's quite interesting. That's a yeah. very relevant, very quick kind of impression of if that was open I we could just I could walk, walk straight home. It. I wouldn't be sitting in the traffic. No, and, and the amazing thing was as, as the conversation developed, I said, but Tom, you can actually see it from your flat, from the other direction, from our down, looking out onto the Cumber Road. I mean, no, I didn't see that. I said, well, it's at the bottom of your street. Why didn't you see it? I mean, so, Brandon, you know what it is? It's been closed for that long. That's the thumbs is closed. There's no reason to be down at the bottom end of that street. He said, so you come out and you automatically take a left turn and you walk back in the yard line. He said, so if I hadn't come past on the bus and be stuck in the traffic, I wouldn't have seen it. And I'm still not aware of the thing. He says, but tomorrow, he says, when I get up, he says, because it'll be dark after I leave the pub. He says, I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and go walk to the bottom of the street want to have a look at it. And I just thought that was a real nice testimony of the work that we're doing and the fact that we've had endorsement and support from both sides of the community in doing it yeah. creates an awful lot of questions around government and what government is actually doing. You know, there was emergency legislation put in place to put these walls up, yeah. but there's no urgency to take them down. And that's what we're trying to do is create the space for the conversation to happen till the point where adults yeah. can then turn in and say, well, now we're comfortable about dealing with it. And I know I was talking to somebody who would recently moved to Northern Ireland just two weeks ago and they said, they asked me about the work I'd done, I said yes, and I worked for 13 years on the peace lines. They go, that must have been a really long time ago, that was a really long time ago, yeah. all those things were there. And I went, you know, they're still there, yeah. they're still up, there's still about 50 of them around the place. In fact, there's one that just went up this year. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and they live in the city and kind of were connecting back in and kind of weren't even conscious of that fact. And in fact, um, the art personalities, there are 88, 88. Than 50. And we contest the thing because we've had uh, long conversations with residents who live on at or close to the interfaces and none of them have ever validated them by calling peace lines. 
just because they don't promulgate peace. Yeah. You know, they're either a source of attack or they become the fulcrum for graffiti, yeah. litter, abandonment, and all the good things. So that really doesn't suggest peace to them. So we call them interface walls or security barriers or whatever. We try to work through it that way, Bruno. But it's interesting, it's all part of that conversation and dialogue. I, th- I think it's brilliant, and um, I'm looking forward to the next thing. Well, I'm hoping don't, that the next thing... It's secret, it's secret. It's not going to be secret. My hope is that the next thing is that we'll actually physically take one away rather than yeah. just draw one down. Yeah. So what we've thrown and said is that to physically remove the barriers, you need to talk to residents. But to draw them down, you don't need anyone's permission. And that's the nature of the project. Okay, thank you very much.